I was not surprised that there was actually, at the end of the day, a search warrant uh, ex executed uh, to find documents that uh, apparently were taken from the White House. New reaction into our newsroom at noon from Representative Ed Case. He's reacting to that story that's still breaking at this hour, that the FBI seized top secret documents from former President Trump's home. That's right. And that FBI search warrant that Ed Case is talking about, it was unsealed today and it shows that former President Trump is being investigated for potential violations of the Espionage Act. For more on this developing story, joining us now live from D.C., Hawaii News Now's White House correspondent, John Decker. Now, John, what else did the search warrant reveal and what did the FBI remove from the former president's Florida estate? Well, we all now know what is contained in the search warrant. Why is that? Because it's now been made public. Here is the search and seizure warrant, which was signed by a federal magistrate on Monday that led to that search of the former president's home. And what we've learned is what was seized during the course of that uh, legal search. 11 sets of classified documents, some of which were marked classified. That's the highest level of top secret classification. In addition to that, 20 boxes. Uh, you mentioned one of the crimes that the federal government believes the former president may have committed, a violation of the Espionage Act. In addition to that, uh, the former president is being investigated for removal or destruction of federal government documents and also obstruction of an investigation. These three federal crimes are very serious, Ashley. Speaking as a lawyer, they, the penalties for them uh, include fines and also imprisonment. So I certainly would imagine during the course of this week, the president uh, is putting together a, a real top-notch criminal defense team to deal with the possibility, and that's all it is, the possibility of charges being brought against the former president. Right. And former President Trump's lawyers have argued that, you know, he has the authority to declassify material once he leaves the White House. Is this true? Well, he doesn't have the power to decertify once he leaves the White House. That power only is vested in the president of the United States. But let's say uh, that they make the argument, well, he declassified them before he left the White House, while he was still president. Uh, that's a good defense. But here's the problem. There's a procedure that goes through this um, effort. And it's not simply the president, you know, waving a magic wand saying, I declassify all of these documents. The procedure is such that each individual document that will be declassified goes through the White House counsel's office. So if the president makes that as his defense, there would be a record of that in the White House counsel's office. If there is no record of that, then that will be a problematic defense as far as the president is concerned. And since the search warrant has been uh, unsealed, have we seen a response from the pre uh, former president or any of his allies? Well, we've seen a response from a person who speaks on behalf of the president, a spokesman for the former president, uh, who uh, spoke about leaks coming from the FBI and also uh, talking about lies coming from the FBI. Uh, the problem with that, there are no more leaks. Uh, this is now made public. Anybody can read this public document. Uh, as far as lies, everything contained in that search and seizure warrant was submitted by federal officials under penalty of perjury. There are no charges that have been brought yet. There may not be any charges that are brought at, during the course of this investigation. Uh, as you know, there was a search of former Hillary Clinton's email server. Uh, no charges were ultimately brought against her, and similarly, Perhaps no charges will ever be brought against the former president. All right. Hawaii News Now's White House correspondent John Decker live from D.C. keeping us informed of this developing story. We appreciate the time, John. Thanks, Ashley. All right. We have more breaking news coming into the H&N Digital Center. You know, police on the Big Island are investigating an apparent drowning of a teenage boy. Another is still missing. Our Casey Lund joins us with the very latest.
Now, aloha from the trailhead of Puna Historic Trail. We're just at the bottom of Hawaiian Paradise Park. Really, this is the only way to access Haena Beach or Shipman Beach, and that is where HFD tells us that group got into trouble. We know there were uh, several adults and at least those two teenage boys, age 16 and age 14, who got into trouble off the waters of Haena Beach yesterday. This was, again, around 3.30 in the afternoon. HFD did have to rest those swimmers. They were able to recover the 16-year-old from the water using their helicopter. We know that he was transported to Hilo Medical Center. They were performing CPR while he was being transported. Unfortunately, he was pronounced dead at Hilo Medical Center just before 5 yesterday afternoon. Uh, the search went into the late hours of the night until dark. Uh, the United States Coast Guard assisted HFD uh, with that search uh, right around uh, Haena Beach. Uh, we know that today, HFD HFD resumed their search, still looking for that 14-year-old boy. We are trying to learn more about how this all unfolded. And again, uh, the status of those adults that were with uh, those young teenagers. But a very sad story here in Puna on this Friday afternoon. For now, we'll send things back to you. Renowned author Salman Rushdie was attacked on stage in western New York today. The incident happened before he was to give a lecture. New York State Police say he was stabbed in the neck and airlifted to the hospital. New York Governor Kathy Hochul said Rushdie is alive and getting the care he needs. She added a state police officer rushed to protect him and a moderator was also hurt in the attack. A suspect was taken into custody immediately. Rushdie is 75 years old. One of his books, The Satanic Verses, has been banned in Iran since the late 80s. Once dubbed as Asia's world city, there's now an uncertain future for Hong Kong. After years of social upheaval and strict COVID lockdowns, there are so many people moving out that now the government is forced to acknowledge it. Christy Lou Stout has more. Hong Kong is reporting a record drop in population. Over the past 12 months, over 113,000 residents have left the city. That represents a population decline of about 1.6 percent. This is the second year in a row that the population has contracted. And if you look at the chart, you'll see that it is the steepest population drop on record since at least 1961. So why is this happening? Well, I pose that question to a migration expert at the University of Hong Kong. The census gives us an early indication of this, you know, that we are witnessing a historic um, uh, departure, the result of the social unrest and the social movement here in Hong Kong, and then followed by COVID, you know, as it, you know, spread across the globe. And of course, we still sit here in the present moment, the only part of the world, China and Hong Kong, you know, as a part of China, that is still living under, you know, the kinds of restrictions um, for entry, which of course is gonna bar people from coming back. Experts say Hong Kong's changing political landscape, as well as its strict zero COVID policy, have prompted many people to make the hard decision to leave the city. For over 7 million residents here, we've had to endure some of the toughest pandemic rules on the planet, effectively isolating this once thriving international business and logistics hub. Just a few months ago in March, we spoke to a few Hong Kongers about why they wanted to leave. I think Hong Kong used to be one of the best places to be in every single aspect in general. And now um, it's losing a lot of uh, the edge of this plantation. If we don't leave, nothing will, <laughs> nothing will change. You, you cannot change the, the government. The Hong Kong government has announced changes to its pandemic policy. In fact, this week announced that it will cut its mandatory hotel quarantine stay from seven days to three days. And that's why I'm here at home. I was able to get out of hotel quarantine early, but now at home for medical surveillance. Officials here in Hong Kong hope these changes will help bring back the city's vital force. Christy Lu Stout, CNN, Hong Kong. And flooding hit parts of Las Vegas this week. Video from inside Planet Hollywood on the Las Vegas Strip showed rain pouring through the casino ceiling. Witnesses say this was a repeat of a similar scene just weeks ago when another storm hit the area. Neighborhoods received up to three quarters of an inch of rain, which is actually a lot for the Vegas area. While soaring prices kept many summer vacations extremely expensive, but experts say there's a sunnier travel forecast ahead. Here's Emily Aketa with more on that. 
After a chaotic summer travel season marred by sky high prices and constant flight disruptions, we're very anxious. We just want to get home. Some welcome relief soaring into the picture. With this week's inflation report showing travel prices are dropping across the board, including airfares, rental cars, hotels, and gas. An improvement being celebrated by budget conscious travelers who skipped summer vacations to avoid the painful price tag. I can really see the difference from two months ago to now, and it's beautiful for me. As kids head back to school and the summer travel rush eases, industry experts predict travel demand will continue to drop. What does that in turn do to prices? That decrease in demand uh, tends to drive prices down, so it makes prices more competitive for people who do have the flexibility to hit the road this fall. Travel app Hopper reports flights will be nearly 40% cheaper than summer's peak, sinking below pre-pandemic prices. Airlines already slashing prices to San Diego, Portland and Salt Lake City by more than $200. And travelers are saving big at hotels in Hawaii and Florida, along with international stays in Turks and Caicos and Greece. The majority of Americans are planning a trip in the next six months, according to a recent survey, and many are leaning on credit card rewards to help ease the burn of inflation. Credit card points and miles can do a lot for you. Uh, they not only often give you a little bit more flexibility, but it means you don't have to put cash on the line. To stretch your dollar the furthest, experts also recommend travelers start tracking flights now with price monitoring tools. Book at least three weeks in advance for domestic flights and a month ahead of international trips. And remember, Friday night stays have been the most expensive this year. So fly and check into your hotel midweek if you can. All of it helping to make your next getaway more affordable. Yeah, I'm saving up those reward points mm -hmm. myself just waiting for the right time to use them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in desperate need of a vacation. It's coming. I promise. <laughs> All right. Look outside, guys. Looking okay out there on this Aloha Friday. I know Guy Hoggy is getting really, really excited about a new swell that's coming mm -hmm. in in about seven days. Let's turn things over to him with an update on that weekend forecast first. These yellow streamlines, well, they'll be easing up and we're expecting slower winds from tomorrow all the way into the middle part of next week. Those winds will be light. There's consequences to that That'll, because that means with the lighter winds, we'll have higher humidity levels. We'll have afternoon clouds and perhaps a few afternoon showers, especially on Monday and Tuesday. But we're still expecting fairly dry and mostly beautiful conditions. So it's going to be lovely. But keep in mind, underlying that is the need for rain and for uh, relief from the drought situation. So breezy today, lighter winds over the weekend, great conditions for the Kaneohe Bay Air Show, and those lighter winds with mostly sunny skies will continue into the latter part of next week. And again, heads up, big swell heading for Tahiti on Wednesday, which means three days after that, we'll see a significant south swell as well. So that's about Saturday of next week. Watch for that. We just had to act. From the job interview. Sometimes you, you believe so much in what you're doing. And I'm always willing to listen to the super debate. Does a person's past matter when they enter into public service? Yes, it is relevant. My whole life is transparent. I believe that every voter should do their own due diligence. H&N has been there for your primary 2022 campaign coverage. Now we've made it to the eve of the big count, and Hawaii News Now is preparing for extensive coverage for tomorrow night. Let's run through our action-packed plans. We'll be keeping an eye on all the big races from across the state all day. I suggest by starting today by looking for any updates or happenings that are unfolding in the morning by checking out our H&N News app or HawaiiNewsNow.com. On those digital platforms, you'll be able to get any information you need to know if you are still needing to cast a ballot. The primary election is tomorrow. Then I'll be co-hosting a special 2 p.m. This is now pre-show on all your H&N digital platforms. Our news team will be bringing you our regular newscast at 5 p.m. on KHNL. Then we will go wall to wall with our live coverage on all our H&N stations starting at 7 p.m. That's KGMB, KHNL, and K5, and of course on our H&N digital platforms. Now that's going to run into our normal 10 p.m. news time. So again, your streaming options, if you want to watch online, are Facebook, 
Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. As you can see, now is the perfect time to download the H&N streaming app to your smart TV if you haven't done so already. A musical, a vampire flick, and a super-powered kids' adventure are in. Rick Damagella has more. Evan, I know you'll miss your friends in school and bagels, mm -hmm. but give it a chance. The Broadway production of 13 The Musical featured an all-teenage cast with new characters added for the Netflix adaptation, including Rhea Perlman as the mother of Deborah Messing's character. It was fun. You know, I'm a big Budinsky in it, and she's like, she can't stand it. You know, Ma, you know, give me some time. Okay, five minutes is up. You know, it's like... <laughs> First-time director J.J. Perry used some proven movie magic to create this memorable scene in the Netflix original Day Shift. There's four there. There's an actress, a stunt double, a fight double, and then a contortionist. And then when you see her smashed into the table, we're not actually smashing her. We start her there on a wire, pull her out, and play it in reverse in a magical frame rate that I can't tell you unless you pay me a lot of money. So it's in camera, it's just on old school. It's some kind of superhero lair. Your dad's a superhero. What? No, my dad can't handle hot wings. Owen Wilson is hiding something in secret headquarters. The superpowered adventure is now streaming on Paramount Plus. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, lots coming to the screens mm -hmm. very soon. I've been watching that Woodstock documentary that's re released recently and yeah. really into it. Yeah. All right, guys, a lot of people watching this, the Little League World Series Midwest Regional Game between Missouri and Iowa. That's just one of the games, of course. There's a really cute moment that happened. Missouri's Brody Jackson, they were listing off what his dream job mm -hmm. would be. I'll just play out what it was. Seen chances this week without an air at third base. He has been fantastic. And his dream job, I don't know if playing third base will help him with that, but his dream <laughs> job is a chicken nugget taste tester. And, uh, you know, he didn't specify. I'm thinking, like, probably Chick-fil-A. Maybe some Chick-fil-A sauce would, would be, like, right up his alley. No, Mickey D's, of course. <laughs> I share the same dream, and I still hold on to it. Chicken Nugget Taster would be an awesome job, Brody. Right Reach on. for the stars, Brody. Yes, right? Well, speaking of snacks, Frito-Lay is launching ketchup-flavored Doritos. Sounds good to me. It's one of those popular flavors in Canada, actually, and though the American version won't be identical, the company says it will be based off the Canadian flavor. So, of course, you need a mustard-flavored chip to accompany it. And this time, the flavor is inspired by a Chinese hot mustard, which we're very familiar with here in Hawaii, and Doritos bills it as spicy mustard. Now, both varieties available on Frito-Lay's website for a limited time. Not too shocking of flavors, yeah, though, really. Yeah, ketchup's my favorite condiment, so oh. I dig it. Well, the Golden Girls Kitchen Pop-Up is up and running in Beverly Hills. Check it out. The TV show-themed dining attraction recreates scenes from the iconic show. The organizers recreated the kitchen as well as Blanche's bedroom. Remember that one? Diners can enjoy Sofia's lasagna al forno or a Miami-style Cuban sandwich. And there's also a colorful assortment of desserts, including Blanche's Georgia-style cookie and, of course, a variety of cheesecakes. So the pop-up will be in LA until October 2020, and then it moves, oh, 2022, then it moves to Miami, Chicago, San Francisco, and then New York City. These self, these are really just selfie stations, let's be oh, real, right? Oh, for sure. And they're, they're popping up everywhere. We got the new one at Ala Moana Center with Snoopy, mm -hmm. right? You yep. can go into Snoopy's bedroom. But you can eat in there. This one's, yeah, you got yeah. the restaurant added on, and people were lining up for it, oh, as yeah. you can see right there. All right, let's get to some good news now. Our good friend Guy Hoggy is recovering from really <laughs> the ride of his lifetime. <laughs> Going up there with the Blue Angels. Let's take a look at it. I had a daydream once where I was in the cockpit of a fighter jet, zooming around, having the time of my life. Never really think it could happen. And I'm still not sure how it all came about, but boom, here I was sitting in the briefing room, getting ready for a flight with the Blue Angels, my blood pressure was rising. 
This is gonna be your seat safe arm handle. Okay. So this is the one you are gonna play with today. The weather was perfect as we walked through the F-18A Super Hornet. Soon, I was strapped in. This was getting real. What was I thinking? How did I get into this? Was I gonna be screaming like Steve Uehara? <laughs> I was hoping to channel the strength my wife showed when she pulled nine Gs in an F-16. She still brags about it today. Luckily, my pilot, Lieutenant Griffith Stengel, eased my anxiousness a little bit with his calm, cool demeanor. He is the epitome of a Navy pilot, the best of the best. And it all seemed good as we took off. And then this. And just like that, climbed away. Six Gs of force on a vertical takeoff, going from sea level to just over 9,000 feet in just a couple of seconds. There was an intense pressure on my body as we climbed. Not gonna lie, I was holding on for dear life. In fact, through all the various acrobatics and maneuvers, I was clenching my core. There's one, two, two. Flexing my leg muscles and struggling to breathe to keep from passing out. All the while, trying hard to embrace each moment. When we pulled a 7.4G turn, all the weeks of preparation paid off. As we made the sharp turn, the weight on my body increased and the pressure built. Yeah. Imagine seven yeah. guy hoggies sitting on top of me. But that was it. That was the limit. I almost blacked out. Seven. Yeah, we touched seven on that one. Seven. Nice work. And remember, in the front of the plane, Lieutenant Stengel was going through the same stress, but it was no big deal for him. I had to take time to recover, unlike the lieutenant, who was just as cool as when we started. Then it was time to head back. And even though the flight was just about 40 minutes, I was spent. Imagine the feeling after a super long, intense workout. But we weren't done yet. Do you want to land like a fighter pilot or do you want to land like an airliner? Good question. <laughs> Ready? So one last 6G maneuver, a deep dive toward the base to cap off a ride of a lifetime. Whoa, Guy Hoggy. I don't know if I could do that. You wouldn't do it? Not 45 minutes. No, thank you. No, thank you. But he's doing fine now, right? Yeah. I mean, he said it was like super, super physical, you know, just taxing. Man. <laughs> yeah, his, he had very serious guy hoggy face when it first went uh -huh, up, right? Uh -huh. And then he was smiles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are right, we have time for one more good news now? Oh, I love this. So Waikiki Elementary School students have named the new Hawaiian monk seal pup. We're talking about Rocky's new male pup, the one that's been hanging out at Kaimana's. So after much deliberation, the students decided to name him Koa Lani. So the students gravitated toward Koa, meaning strong and brave, then added Lani, meaning heaven, sky, and royalty. So together, Koa Lani, meaning heavenly warrior. Now born in July, Koa Lani is the eighth reported Hawaiian monk seal pup of 2022, born on Oahu. So cute. I know. Keep your distance though, please yes. folks. Keep the distance. Yeah, the Rocky's distance. very protective. All right, you guys, we've made it to Friday. Ashley and I are gonna be here tomorrow though for special <laughs> primary election coverage. We love it. It's like fake Friday. Yeah, it'd be fun, it'd be fun. Again, it all gets started tomorrow morning when you wake up, check your h and news apps or h and Dot com to see if there's any updates you need to know about. And then at 2 o'clock, there's a special edition of This Is Now on all your h and digital platforms. And then we have a 5 o'clock newscast. And then wall-to-wall -wall coverage starts at 7 throughout the night. Mm -hmm. So keep tuned to H&N. Have a good one. See ya.